Hi, Aspen. So, the RTX 30 series was announced with universal acclaim, hype, and anticipation for the future of more accessible, higher quality PC gaming. So real quick before the video begins, I wanna say thank you again to my recent subscribers. We just hit 2,000, and thank you for the support on my last video about the graphics card world. Nice. It's a really exciting place to be in right now, both with technology and gaming. It's a good time to be a nerd, good time to be a gamer. Um, so if you're a nerd, if you're a gamer, if you like the content here, Give that like button a press, pushes our tiny little channel out into the algorithm a bit more, and make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell anyways. So again, I made a few videos about the new RTX 3000 cards. And like many people, I wasn't able to get my hands on one, not like I could really afford one. And I guess it was a good thing that I waited like a lot of other people did or were kind of forced to do because I wanted to see what AMD had up their sleeve. And let's just say, Things just got interesting. Okay, now that the intro is done, adding back a little bit of light here. So as I've mentioned before in many videos, even though they don't really get any views, uh, I built a Ryzen system back in the first generation and I've always kind of used AMD due to their kind of budget friendly mindset, but I ended up getting an RDNA 1 5700 XT because my RX 580 died and had to get repaired and then I sold it to Trey. Random plug, him and I are doing a lot of live streaming on Twitch at Induction Games and Mr. Beegs. Good place to, to talk about technology, gaming, and just and just chill. It's, it's a nice experience. So the 30 series, even though it was advertised as this groundbreaking two times the performance at less cost, best, biggest, greatest leap in gaming technology uh, year to year, didn't quite perform that, that two times that was promised, mainly because that two times performance is in specific little categories, game to game, technology to technology. The ray tracing or RTX technology is a lot better than the last generation. And DLSS 2.0, which is used to downscale the game and then use AI to upscale it, allowing for more graphics headroom, is also a lot more efficient. I think a lot of the reasons we're not seeing huge performance gains is because we're still waiting on those next generation games that are more designed for this new technology and really just software optimizations in general. The other reason I'm kind of glad I, I didn't jump on a RTX 30 series right away is because there was kind of a big epic fail in the power management of a lot of 30 series cards. A lot of the third party ones didn't have adequate power management, the little capacitors on the back side of the card right under the die. A lot of people who were miraculously lucky enough to get one, notice these issues and, and hopefully they'll be resolved in refreshes or maybe software updates. But yeah, that's just the unfortunate part about getting something day one. But on to the reason I have this atrocious red light on my face, and that's AMD. Now AMD, whew, Team Red has been killing it the past few years, especially in the processor space. Once again, with the Ryzen 5000 series announcement a few weeks ago, which I didn't really cover, not only are they still dominating in the amount of cores you get in processors, now offering a 12 core, 24 thread, and another 16 core, 32 thread consumer desktop GPU, I mean CPU, but finally, they beat Intel in every category, including single core performance. So yeah, get on it, Intel. Get out of 14 nanometer, you stupid. <clears throat> but again, it doesn't stop there. AMD announced Navi 2. <laughs> the uh, Radeon RX 6000 series, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh, mm. the, the spicy rumors were pretty much all true. So we have several new cards coming from AMD that actually compete with Nvidia's high-end offering. Now they don't have anything that directly competes with the 3090, at least on paper. Do, do, do you really have an 8K display? I mean, come on. But anyways, Lisa Sue, Wonder Woman Incarnate. Yeah, she came on stage and announced three new graphics cards. The 6800, 6800 XT, and the uh, 6900. Nice. nice. But yeah, RDNA 2, uh, over 50% improvement from every generation prior. Um, they even beat their target at 54%. Again, this is all marketing speak. Uh, the channels who are lucky enough to get a copy of these cards to, to test and benchmark will know for sure. AMD, hey, I mean, if you want to send one my way, I'll make a great fun video that goes over 
the card. The takeaway from this event is they now have two cards that can compete and trade blows with the RTX 3080 at cheaper prices. They also announced their competitor to DDR6X, Infinity Cash. Infinity Cash is basically a small cache in the graphics card, similar to that in their processors, that will make up for the bandwidth limitations of the lower bus speeds of 256-bit and the, the lack of DDR6X. In layman's terms, having faster memory and higher bandwidth memory goes hand in hand with next generation gaming. It's not all just about more compute cores. You need that high bandwidth memory to stream the higher resolution textures and effects at these higher resolutions and also increase frame rates to make 120 frames a second more accessible. Now AMD also announced, even though they didn't give much detail on it, their answer to NVIDIA's RTX and DLSS, and that's called Fidelity FX. Fidelity FX utilizes many similar features to both the PS5 and Xbox Series next-gen consoles, including things like adaptive shading, uh, advanced ambient occlusion, variable rate shading, which targets different areas of the screen to, to be higher quality or lower quality shading, de depending on how much motion and, and the focus. This is all for creating more efficient shading to hit those higher frame rates on hardware that, you know, doesn't cost $2,000. And this is something that I always thought was going to be the big push with the next generation more advanced software and AI that makes up for not having to cram in hundreds of dollars more of, of hardware if we can just utilize and create more clever software to make up for it, similar to DLSS in NVIDIA. But again, we have to really see this in action. The great thing is a lot of the titles on the next generation consoles are using all of this technology because it's all built on the RDNA 2 architecture. The other big thing that these cards are going to have that we really haven't seen in action yet or seeing how big of a performance impact it has, which is the ray tracing, which has one ray tracing unit per compute unit. I, I I don't know. It's again, it's it's all just marketing speak at this point. We need to see it tested to <coughs> sorry, my throat's kind of dry to, to, to really see how efficient it is compared to Team Green's offerings. So here are my closing thoughts. The great thing about RDNA 2 is it's using a lot of the really cool new technologies that are going to be featured in the next-gen consoles. So if you're looking to play any of the third-party games that are cross-platform between PlayStation 5, Xbox Series S or X, and PC, you're probably going to be able to take advantage of most of these new DirectX 12 Ultimate rendering techniques with these new cards. The other thing that I forgot to mention is I, do, I can't remember exactly what it's called, but if you pair their Ryzen 5000 CPUs with a 6000 GPU, they are now created to work more in tandem and share that graphics memory for a performance boost in, in many games, even before developers start optimizing for it, which could mean even greater efficiencies. Now, I don't doubt that NVIDIA's cards are gonna be able to hold their own perfectly fine with a lot of these titles, but a lot of the optimization is gonna be built in because it's just the same architecture across the board. And I think that might be something that's kind of built into the, the next-gen consoles as well, even though they're technically an older CPU architecture. Again, we'll see. I'm excited. Let me know your thoughts below. Feel free to correct me if you disagree with anything or if I said something that was just factually false. They're just kind of my thoughts. I wanted to make a video about this because I'm really excited to see what the future of PC gaming holds and, uh, and how the lines between um, the PC gaming technology and consoles are, are blurring. So we'll see how well it holds up for the next five to seven years of this next generation. I hope you have a great day, a great night, a great life. If you like this video, consider subscribing and stay safe.